Welcome to the Bundakama, the place where you will find all the needed objects in order to discover yourself. But be careful, this cabinet of curiosities will uncover things you never wanted to see unveiled. This room will open the abyss of darkness for you. You will see how this darkness will lead you to the light you were searching for all this time. Wundakama is excited to be your guide to that light. Happiness is something that we all want. We all have this certain goal of happiness that we want to achieve. We constantly think about how to make our life better, happier, or more satisfying. But we never seem to feel that way. The truth is, there are billions of definitions and philosophical questions along with ideas about happiness. I'm not going to stand here and pretend and tell you what happiness is as if I know what your guidance and what your definition is currently. The same truth remained for thousands of years. The best way to teach and to learn is by thought-provoking experiences and questions. In this short episode, I will lay out six of the most basic and important questions in order for you to find the definition of the aspects of what represents happiness for you. And keep in mind that these definitions can change over time, because of course our personal beliefs, priorities and values change over time. If you're stuck and feel confused about your current situation and relationship with happiness, we'll first define the most important constructive elements of your happiness. If you also get blocked by a lot of resistance, you can watch my first episode on this channel called Why are we so afraid of happiness, where I explain about many aspects of happiness along with the possible resistance and blockages and how to overcome them. I also introduce IFS methods that help with solving any resistance or issue that comes up in your life. Let's cut to the chase. These are the questions. Pause the video in order to write them down. One. How do you incorporate success and challenge into your life? 2. What does it mean to be happy? 3. How do you proceed to a position of flourishing following tragedy, betrayal or setback? What do you need to give yourself when experiencing every failure or setback? 4. How do you exercise your enthusiasm? 5. What do you think about luck? And six, how do you practice savoring? So in order to demonstrate, I also answered the questions and did this exercise for my own benefit. And I'll give my answers as an example. So for the first question, how do you incorporate success and challenge into your life? I answered, I want to set higher goals and build the confidence to see them more as a challenge than something that makes me feel scared and overwhelmed. Setting higher goals was never a problem for me. The problem was that I never appreciated what I succeeded in doing. I should also do all the things I want on time in order to be able to build the confidence and that stable degree of self-efficacy. I never celebrate the small successes and that's the thing that I want to incorporate more into my life. I also want to deal with the resistance and develop the habit to notice it. I want to work on every emerging resistance in the moment it appears, because I usually neglect it. I want goals to feel more like a challenge than a threat. For the second question, what does it mean to be happy? For me, happiness is always about being what you love and doing everything with the truest intentions. For me, happiness is more about acceptance and resolving every issue, along with enjoying what I have right now as much as I can. For me personally, happiness is much more like being in the flow with the things that I want and be responsive to change. This is what I want to stick to. Happiness is also more about seeing results than spending the time on something. For the third question I answered, besides the learned lesson from every setback or failure, I need my own support, praise and love in order to flourish. I need to give myself self-love in order to recover from every setback. I need to remind myself that I never had the guidance or support that would help me get things right, so I need my own patience to learn what I need to get where I want to be. This is the most essential aspect that I need in order to flourish. I need my inner parent. 
I also need support from the people for what I need at the moment. For the fourth question, how do you exercise your enthusiasm? I answered. I exercise my enthusiasm by talking to other people about difficult situations or when I do a scavenger hunt for the things that I currently appreciate in my life. I also practice my enthusiasm when I think or write about things that I am looking forward to. I also boost my enthusiasm when I listen to bands like Mild Orange. For the fifth question, I answered, luck is all about getting in its way. Luck always finds you when you're aligned with what you love doing, and when you expose yourself along with the things that you want people to see or feel, luck is inevitable. Luck is also about finding the right people and the right support which will push you to the place where you want to be. For the sixth question, how do you practice savoring? I answered. Savoring for me is appreciating and noticing every aspect of an experience that you are currently in, like the smell of the coffee or the warm voice of the person that you love. I do activities like different types of meditations or setting my mind to living in the present moment and noticing the smallest details of everything around me. It's not only important to answer these questions. The most essential aspect of this exercise is when you answer all these questions, you need to commit to the answers. This means, as an example, if you answer the second question, what does it mean to be happy, with your definition, being happy for me means to live in the present moment along with appreciating it and being mindful. You shouldn't stop here. Incorporate exercises and actions that provoke you to align with this answer. In this case, tools that help you to live in the moment, appreciate it and, of course, be mindful. I also need to emphasize the fact that this exercise is not about perfectionism. It's very important to stick to these answers as much as you can, but you also need to be mindful that it's impossible to not experience constant changes or unpredictability. There will be days when you face important shadows and you will have to give attention to them. This is why you need to validate and flow with your emotions. Don't cling to these definitions as if they are the rules of your life. Use them, but don't let these definitions become the limits of your being. See you next time. Did you like the visit in the Wunda Kama? If you did, Please like, subscribe, and share this content if you see it as helpful. Did you also notice the artworks in this video? They're not put accidentally. If you want to understand my philosophical reasons of why I put them in the video, you can become a crow on Patreon. In that tier, I'm posting the paintings and the contacts they have in the video. You can also see them like Easter eggs. But only crows can see through the messages because they are messengers themselves. You can also become a raven. In that tier, you can ask me for answers and guidance about anything you're curious about, and you're going to receive a high quality answer. I also have playlists on Spotify under my name, Katerina Lunas, if you need something to trigger and enhance your emotional experience. Can you hear the footsteps? They're the footsteps of illusion. It's coming. But what are you going to do about it? Accept it or do something about it?